Hello everyone, welcome to another installment of Insecurity. This is episode 24 and we are lucky to have Amber Gott from LastPass. We want to check in with them. We want to see what's been going on since the last time we spoke with them. I would introduce Tom, but Tom's not feeling well today. He's leaving me in charge and for 30 minutes you have me and you have Amber to help us out. Well, thanks for inviting me back. It's, uh, it's great to be back and, and catch up with you guys. Well, it's, it's, you rolled out a really cool update. And we, when, once we saw it, we said we have to have everyone back on to really explain it. So do you want to explain what this update is? Yeah, so um, well, I guess just taking a step back, you know, for anyone who's new to LastPass and what it is that we do, um, you know, we, we make a password manager. So we're setting out to solve the world's password problems. And, you know, in our increasingly interconnected world, you know, we're online all the time now to do everything, to catch up with people, to do our work, to pay our bills. Everything is really transitioning. Um, so our, our online ecosystem is just getting more complex. And of course, the more logins you have, the more things you're doing online, the more passwords you have, it just gets overwhelming. Um, and then obviously the more devices you have, you know, most people nowadays might have a work computer, they might have a personal laptop, and then, you know, increasingly smartphones, uh, you need to be able to access those accounts, use those passwords, use that data across all your devices. So LastPass sets out to solve that problem universally across everything. Um, and part of our product suite is we have mobile apps to let you access your LastPass uh, password manager on your phone and have access to all of your data there. And in the past, we have been a little bit limited by the mobile environment. You know, mobile's great because it's, so, um, it's so accessible, it goes everywhere with you. Uh, but to date, the platforms have been a little bit restrictive. So our app, you know, you would have to copy paste your data from one app to another when you needed to log in. Um, on Android, we had a couple really great features, uh, copy notifications. Uh, so instead of having to copy paste, you could copy from drop down notifications on the device. Uh, and we also had our own keyboard. Uh, but there, there were still a, quite a few extra steps really required of the user to make to make uh, to make use of those features. What's awesome is uh, about two weeks ago we released a new feature that takes advantage of the new accessibility functionality on Android platforms. Um, it's part of Android 4.1 or later. So these are newer changes that Google has been making to the Android platform over the last year, maybe two years. Um, and what we've been able to do is take advantage of that functionality and actually show up on an app where a user needs to use us. So let's say, you know, you're getting set up with uh, Twitter on your phone, you've downloaded the Twitter app, you're ready to uh, log into your account. Now, with LastPass, we can pop up right there on the Twitter app. You can select your saved Twitter account and just bam, it's in the app, you log in, you're done. It's just a matter of a few taps. So you know, we're making it so much more seamless now on the Android platform for our for our users. They they can really take advantage of that experience. Uh, that's great because one of the things Tom and I keep on saying is you need unique passwords, you need long passwords, and you want to try and avoid memorable passwords. And by having all these on the computer, everything is fine. On in the browser, you have the LastPass extension. It works. Everything is perfect but you open up Skype. Well, now you have to open the browser, go to your LastPass vault, copy and paste the password in. And while that's easy on the desktop, you're now on mobile. And with each mobile account now, everybody wants to store your data in the cloud, and they require a sign-on. And if they don't have OAuth with Facebook or Twitter or anything like that, now you have to make a choice. Do I make an insecure password because I have to type, I have to type this all on the computer, or do I have the hassle of unlocking my LastPass vault on the phone, typing in my master password, copying, pasting, putting it in? And that's tedious. And a lot of times, a lot of people, they do it once, and that's it. And like Foursquare was an example. 
I get there and I want to check in and oh, I got to log in. Oh, uh, I really, eh, you <laughs> know what? How badly do I want to check in? <laughs> yeah, how bad do I want to do this? And, yeah. and from a security standpoint, that's actually really good that if you don't want to do it, it's probably better. Because what am I doing on Foursquare? I'm telling people that I'm not home. <laughs> but same thing with Skype, same thing with, with anything, a game that you're playing, logging in, logging into game, well, uh, on iOS, Game Center on iOS, uh, which you can't actually do because of the iOS security issues. But it's just, it, it's great. And and now and now you really can tell people that this is, that if you have an Android phone, an Android tablet, you can, lo this makes life much easier. And you can tell people, now it's time to really change your passwords. Exactly. And I think, you know, uh the other benefit of it is if you ever have been through the hassle of either having to replace a phone and get all set up again or you're just ready to transition devices and, and get started on a new phone, I mean, you have to sit there and authenticate everything uh, as you're getting set up. All your new apps, um, you know, it's you're starting from, from you know, the base again and something like LastPass, I mean it just takes all the headache out of it to have everything you need right then and there. Um, you're not even think thinking about it. And then like you said, it really reinforces the security practices that we all know we should have uh, but maybe, you know, maybe haven't been following to date. Uh, you know, this means that now you don't have to worry about, oh, crikey, am I going to remember that Skype password or that Twitter password? What did I generate it as? You know, where am I going to go back and find it? Because uh, it's just all there. It's, it really is brainless. And honestly, you're also messing with your mobile keyboard less. I mean, I don't know about anyone else, but I fat finger things all the time. <laughs> and, you know, the less I have to deal with typing out a very accurate password, um, you know, the better off the better off I'm getting, the less frustrated I am, my mobile experience is going to be. So, yeah, we it's it's just so much more seamless on, on the Android devices now. And I guess let's while we have while we're talking Android, let's go to, over to iOS. And I'm going to ask you, will this ever come to iOS? I don't want to say never because I mean, you really I don't know what direction the platform's going to go. Their accessibility accessibility features might continue to develop. They do have accessibility features that are similar to Android's. It's just that Android as a platform is a little more um, manageable for developers. Uh, they can hook into things in the operating system in ways that you just can't in in Apple's ecosystem. Uh, it's just, they just don't let apps communicate with each other um, in quite the same way. So yeah, we it's not something we can accomplish right now. We're certainly looking at options and I think we remain optimistic that we might be able to do something in the future, especially if Apple sees that this is really a huge selling point uh, on the other platforms. If you haven't listened to uh, Steve Gibson of Security Now, the last his last three episodes, iOS Security one, two, and three, uh, you really should give that a listen. A listen. He really I goes it. through. Yeah. He really goes that. through with every detail of iOS, and he keeps on saying, iOS is awesome for these security features. They do everything right, and one of the things that he keeps on saying, especially in the third one, is that. Uh, Apple tends to silo the apps, so right. they don't want this cross-sharing. So when you ask Siri to call mom, how does it get your address book? Because it doesn't allow the the, the sharing of information because it does because it doesn't want the leak. And I have a feeling that one of the permissions, obviously, LastPass needs is is having access to certain accessibility features that iOS just doesn't allow, and for for security reasons, and this is one of those. Right. Uh, do you want the security or do you want the convenience? And and we trust LastPass, and we've always said that we really do trust LastPass. But any other uh, password management system can come along and and do bad things because you gave them that permission. Right. You know, I, I think um, we always put security first. Uh, so we definitely don't want to go down a path that may uh, not be in alignment with our ideals, you know, in regards to security. So, you know, I, I think at this point, you know, with Apple, it's just kind of a wait and see game. And and like I said, you know, we're we're hopeful, we're optimistic that the platform might continue to develop in a way that eventually will allow us to do it, uh, you know, in 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 the way that we want to. I mean, I hold out hope, and the only reason I say that for iOS is because. 
Facebook found a way with chat heads, and if you've never experienced chat heads, Facebook found a way. You have their chats, and the little heads appear right on the screen, and they and to overlay something, and maybe there's a way to overlay the password, and then you copy paste it, something like that. But if you're going to do it in a secure way, you have to find the secure way to do it. I don't know if that's the right answer, but I'm very optimistic. I think it will, just not right now. Yeah, I'm. I'm not very familiar with chat heads. I mean, it, it would be really interesting to know how they're accomplishing that. I mean, are they using Apple's current accessibility features, or is it some other, you know, tie-in on on the operating system? Um, you know, I'm not familiar, but it, it would be really interesting to to know a little bit more. So, so let's take a step back, and I think we answered at the top of the show. Can you reiterate why we should, quickly, why should we trust LastPass? I mean, we've said it. We've said that everything happens locally and everything, but let's hear it from you say, once again saying why we should trust, trust you guys. Well, I'm always happy to make the case. <laughs> um, well, you know, I, I think what, what our key differentiator is, we strive to be universal. So we truly take the power of the cloud uh, and and make universal password management uh, uh, with that power. But obviously, uh, you know, when people hear like, "Oh, you're a, cl a cloud-based password manager," what does that mean? You know, how are you transferring data? How can you tell me that that's secure? Well, the key really is where the encryption process takes place. Uh, so we use local-only encryption and decryption, which basically means that when you set up your account the encryption key is generated on your end, on your machine, going through an algorithm that we allow to take place on that machine, and uh, the actual encryption key is not communicated back with us. What's shared with us is a one-way salted hash, uh, which sounds very fancy and technical, uh, and it, that's, it is kind of a complicated, uh, um, uh, complicated uh, technical concept, but basically what it means is it's a one-way uh, algorithm. So it's very easy to generate and very, very hard to go backwards from that. You basically uh, can't go backwards with a one-way salted hash. Anyway, so what we do is basically do um, matching based on those hashes, uh, but it, it allows us to never have the key to your account. It allows us to never have the encryption key because all of that's taking place locally on whatever device you happen to be using. Uh, so essentially, you know, anything you put in LastPass, that sensitive information is encrypted and then synced with us. We just store it in this, you know, encrypted blob format, and then whenever you next request it is when it's synced back to you, and only then when it hits your machine is it decrypted to plain text in a format that you can use. So it's essentially like we give you a box, you fill it with a bunch of important stuff, you lock it up, send it back to us, but you keep the key. That's kind of how I like to explain uh, explain it, but there's a lot of complicated uh, technical concepts. There's a lot of complicated, uh, you know, hashing and salting and PPKDF2 rounds. There's, there's a lot that goes on uh, technically to make that happen. And, we, and we've said before that, that you you truly don't have the key. If you forget your password, that's it. There's nothing that yeah. you guys can do on your end other than whatever hints that we that we gave you. Right. I think you when can you do like a hint there somewhere. Yeah. When you set up an account, we ask you to create a hint, and that's meant to remind you of what you have set your master password to be. We do have a recovery process, but it's completely locally based. Uh, so, you know, like I was saying, when when the account creation process, ha pro process happens on your computer, another copy of that hashed um, key is stored on your device. So if you were to forget your master password, you could perform recovery on the computer where you've used LastPass, and we can try to do a key match that way. Uh, but you know, if, if if that data gets wiped, if you forget your master password, and uh, you know for whatever reason recovery is not possible, then yeah, we there's nothing we can do because we don't have that data, which is good for our users. That's that's very good to protect our users' data in that way. Um, but it also means you have to be really careful about uh, remembering your master password. The, the idea is you only have to remember one password, and from there everything else LastPass can remember for you. 
Exactly. So, as long as you remember that one. I keep I can't remember. Can this work offline? I keep I remember I can do it at school where I have no service. So I have a feeling LastPass can work offline based on the last uh, what's it called? The last decryption. Yeah, exactly. Based on the last sync, every time you hit the, every time you log in online, you're basically um, exchanging information with LastPass.com. So if any changes were made in another place, those changes are synced to where you're now logging in, and then a cached copy of what you're currently, uh, what your current updates are, is then stored on the local client. Um, and that local cache is also encrypted with the same encryption process that we use you know, online to sync. Basically what that means is you always have a copy of your data with us encrypted and you always have a copy of your data with you encrypted via the LastPass download on your browsers. So if you were to lose internet access or you just happened to be in an area where you couldn't for the time being, as long as you were on a browser where you logged into LastPass before, you'd have offline access to that data. It would be stored in that uh, and the browser extension would be able to access it without internet. One of the one of the the oddly missed I don't want to say oddly missed but one of the overlooked features are the secure notes features and you guys have added a ton to that where yeah. you can put your driver's license and you can put your software regi uh, registration keys you can upload tiny I guess tiny P uh, tiny JPEG photos there and you can just like go crazy with this and it's really truly a digital safe. Yeah, it's 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 a really robust feature that, like you said, I, I think it's one that you you might discover as you are getting more and more out of LastPass. I mean, we we really are a very feature rich pro product, and and we try to think of all the types of sensitive information that you might need to store, particularly the types of information that you might only access every once in a while. Those are the great things to store in a password manager. Like you said, software license keys. You might not need that very often, but when you need it, you really need it. So it's it's great to to have that secure backup and our our secure notes support attachments. So you might have specific secure documents that you want to have a backup of. Uh, and like you said, there's a lot of different templates in the secure notes. So you can store a lot of different card types. You can store images of certain things uh, with those cards. Uh, so example for for me when I when I travel. I actually make sure that I always have a digital attachment of the main, you know, the credit cards that I'm traveling with and the of uh, the uh, the passport that I'm traveling traveling with because if something ever happens and I lose my wallet while I'm traveling, it's a lot easier for me to just go on log in online, print off those documents and then either, you know, work on getting replacements or cancel whatever I need to cancel. Having that information is a jump start. So, anyway, that's just an example of how um, that feature can really be taken advantage of. And it's also great because if you, well, people always tell us, take a picture of your passport, keep it on your phone. But if you get stopped, and if you get stopped, everyone can, and you have to unlock your phone, you don't necessarily have to unlock LastPass. And again, we're talking really crazy security and <laughs> paranoia here. But you could say, you know that it's in LastPass, you know it's secure, you know you need another password to get right. in, and and there is some sort of plausible deniability on that end. And, and if you haven't seen that feature, the secure notes features are great. And you can put as many as you want. Uh, I mean, I just put all my, my newborn son's uh, information there also. And then we have the sharing features, which uh, that was that was. I think we talked to you last time about that sharing. You can if one person has a premium account, you can share up to with the five family members and all that. That was also great. Yeah, that was a part of our 3.0 release, and um, yeah, it's it's a great feature because you know if you know if you have a, a spouse or a partner and you're managing joint accounts it's a really great great way to just throw those logins into one folder so everyone's you know got it all uh, all updates are synced automatically and you both have access to what you need when you need it um, it's also great you know if you co-manage accounts with friends or even um, you know if you're just working on a project here and there with people it, it's just such a, a handy thing to be able to just share a whole folder of logins with them uh, and and you can drop secure notes in in those folders as well. So it's pretty I, handy. I admit that I haven't played exactly with it yet, but 
because I'm still on legacy, not the legacy, but the legacy mindset of, oh, let me share this. And because I'm a premium member, I can share it and say, obscure the password, but remember changes when I make them. So the mm -hmm. person, all they have to do is log in and not have to worry about it. And I really so benefit, do like that feature. Right, exactly. The benefit, though, of, of jumping to the shared folder is you actually don't even have to think about tracking changes, which is uh, with our previous, uh, you know, one-to-one -one sharing, uh, that was the only way was to make sure you had checked, you know, track changes, sync changes automatically. Uh, shared folders does that. Uh, you know, it's, it's built into the feature, so it's just a little more uh, seamless, particularly if you have to share multiple logins with one person. It just, it really, you know, condenses the process and into one easy share. Well, let's move on. We Tom and I talk about the NSA all the time and all the revelations. <laughs> and, uh, again, and again, Amber can't answer this anyway, but we'll ask her. Uh, do we have to worry about the NSA uh, asking for your master hashes? If they, can they send you a national security letter? I don't know what you can answer, but try your best. Well, we we did post on our blog uh, last year. You know, there was there was sort of growing concern about what that meant for services like ours. I don't know if you remember um, Lava Bay. There was there were yes. some instances of services who had to who made the decision to shut down because of things that were going on. Um, so it's a very real concern. You know, I, I certainly understand where the question is coming from. Uh, so we we did post uh, on our blog reiterating that we value our user's trust. We place very, you know, security and privacy are, are our top concerns. We're very dedicated to those um, ideals. So, you know, we, we've we not been forced to do anything. We've not been forced to make any changes. That's what we posted on the blog. And, you know, I can tell you that to the best of my knowledge, nothing has changed in that department. And our CEO made it pretty clear that if anything were to put us in an uncomfortable position or put us in the position of having to risk, um, you know, the, the trust of our users, we would be willing to take pretty drastic action. Um, you know, we basically said in the blog post that if push comes to shove, you know, we would rather shut down LastPass than have to jeopardize our encryption process or jeopardize, you know, any of our systems or any of the ways in which our, our product is implemented. So, um, thankfully, to the best of my knowledge, like I said, we haven't been pushed into that position. And I, I don't, the other part of the, of the argument is that there's, sadly, there's a lot easier ways for them to get the data that they want. You know, if truly, if they want what's in LastPass, uh, it's just so much easier to go after other channels than it is to come after us, um, just because of the way our product is implemented. Uh, and and so I, I don't know if that's the reason why we haven't been served with anything um, that I know of to date. But not not to play scare tactics here, but I would think that that going after the password management system is the exact way to go because now you don't. All you got to do is get you, get LastPass or get whoever to say, oh, here are all the passwords. Now you have Twitter and Facebook and everything else, which leads me to the two-factor authentication. And we've spoken mm -hmm. about, we've spoken about, I mean, Tom and I are fans of both uh, the Google Authenticator app and YubiKeys. Mm -hmm. And that's and that was another cool feature. And, and I, I do want to commend you for not making that a premium feature. Because one of the things people like to do is say, oh, if you want this extra security, pay us some extra money. And, oh, and I, I do want to say this before we forget. The, 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 the idea of filling in the passwords with, uh, through Android and the pop-ups is a premium feature. But, again, premium means $12 a year, which I'm sure everyone can find lying around. Yeah, so, well, the... Um the mobile app itself, yeah, is, is part of our premium suite. So, uh, you know, when you upgrade to premium, the one $12 per year subscription covers any of our premium features and it's unlimited use. So basically, you just, you're unlocking access to all LastPass features, period. Um, and, and so, yeah, that, that does include the, the Android mobile app. Um, we do, some of our multi-factor options are premium features, but yeah, we, we were very committed to making sure that all users, whether free or premium, would have access to at least a few options when it came to multi-factor authentication. And, you know, there, there's been some really great things going on 
with multi-factor authentication. Uh, there's people do really interesting things. We um, over the last few years, you know, YubiKey has been one of our, or YubiCo has been one of our uh, really, you know, a strong partner of ours. You know, I personally use the YubiKey. It's awesome. Um, but we also have um, Twofer is a newer multi-factor authentication method. Uh, there's also Duo Security. Uh, and what's great about those is uh, they actually are mobile-based, um, kind of like Google Authenticator in that they're mobile apps, but they actually rely on push notifications. So instead of, uh, you know, with Google Authenticator, you're entering a six-digit code every single time uh, that's generated from the mobile app, or with the YubiKey, you're swiping your, uh, your device every single time to generate the one-time password. Well, with you know, a service like Twofer or a service like Duo Security, you're actually uh, receiving a pop-up notification on your phone and you just say accept or reject. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's all these ways to, depending on, you know, your workflow, the devices that you use, uh, just your preferred method, uh, there's, there's really a, a, a lot of great options out there. It's, it's more diverse than it's ever been. And, and what I'm seeing is, well, I'm not necessarily seeing, but more companies are forcing their employees to get on the two-factor authentication bandwagon. And I think the way it works is everyone has their little RSA tokens. And mm -hmm. if they're used to that already, I, I don't think it's that far-fetched to say, with all these password leaks, why don't I, why don't I do it myself? Google, Google Authenticator has pushed itself. Every time there's a password leak or somebody's Twitter account gets hacked, I see that pop up everywhere. Use two factor, use two factor, use two factor, and and Google Authenticator made it really easy. You guys make it really easy, and it and the great thing is it support you can support many different options and many different ways of authenticating. So I think that's great. Yeah, and I, I think you know what I would love to see is I would I would love to see teams use multi-factor authentication more, particularly teams where multiple people might have access to a single account. Uh, so teams who manage Facebook accounts, teams who manage Twitter accounts, uh, teams who manage uh, anything that might affect, you know, brand, uh, you know, that might affect uh, communication channels, you, you know, that, that starts to be serious stuff. So um, two-factor authentication is such an easy way to just Add another step to lock down the account. You're just you're safeguarding it that much further, and you know because because these two-factor authentication methods really are so usable nowadays. Um, there's just there's hardly any extra burden added to the user. Um, you know when when they're logging in. So there's really no reason not to do it. Uh, and and so I, I you know I'm I'm glad to see it spreading more and more. I'm glad to see uh, lots of different options for users to choose from and. You know, we've, we've had great adoption with it, you know, amongst LastPass users. Uh, so I, I think it's a really great, great trend. It's, it's awesome. And we only have two minutes left, so we're going to start winding down. But it's, <laughs> it's I, I do see, I do see now, now that mainstream media has picked up all these security stories, it's good to see that they're saying, let's do better password management, let's do this. And I like how a lot of people are saying, look, uh, why don't you try LastPass? you don't like LastPass, here are other alternatives. And these are the problems, but the solutions, but it saves you so much more time. Put, It saves you so much more time that with, instead of getting your identity stolen, you, you put your passwords in once, you take a week out of your life, and you really say, this is what I'm going to worry about with security and two-factor. And as soon mm -hmm. as you make that mindset, I mean, this is not quitting smoking or quitting drinking or a gambling addiction. This is can you give yourself a can you give yourself one week and just try your best, make all the passwords the same and let LastPass manage it. And once you get comfortable, <laughs> then change them. So at least you 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 feel like you have a backup. And then once you get more comfortable, you explore another feature and another feature and another feature. And I think that you'll end up doing very well. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with you. Is there anything else that uh, in the minute left that we want to promote, we want to say anything for, <laughs> we want to shout out? 
Well, I, I apologize. I didn't have my act together enough to be able to offer, uh, you know, premium upgrade coupon or, you know, a, a, a link for them to redeem. But I will offer that if anyone wants to get in touch with me at Amber, A-M-B-E-R, at LastFast.com, I'm happy to give a little promotional credit uh, so you can take your time, try out the premium features, and, and you know, really get a feel for just how how much uh, LastPass can impact your online life. So don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm, I'm always happy to help. And only send positive vibes. No, no <laughs> trolling. Amber's been great enough to come on the show. Don't make her life miserable. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, guys, everybody, have a good week, and we'll see you next time. Let's see.